Welcome back to another episode of Sean's Stance. And tonight we are going to talk about criteria and does it change from open to masters and also from NPC to IFBB. But before we get into all that, make sure that you subscribe, turn on that notification bell, like and comment. You may be one of our next winners for a posing giveaway if you do. Stay tuned and see who wins tonight. You guys are getting logged on tonight. Good evening, good evening. So. First thing is, is that this weekend we did hit uh, over 600 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is awesome. So um, I love your live stream. We learned so much. Good, good, good. Yes, blue. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, blue goes well with my eyes. Goes well with my eyes. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yes, we did um, hit over 600 subscribers on our YouTube channel. So what we're doing with the giveaway, for those of you that are new here, is every 100 subscribers that we add, I'm going to do another giveaway. So um, we're doing posing session giveaways. And basically how that works is you have to be subscribed to our channel and you have to be commenting on our channel. That's it. As long as you're watching our videos and liking and commenting and all that kind of stuff, that enters you. Um, so we are going to do our first giveaway tonight because I said every 100 subscribers, we will do a new giveaway. So we're gonna do that, do that at the very end of this uh, live feed. You have to bear with me because I'm going to do it on my computer and I got to flip my phone around and all sorts of fun stuff, but we'll get it done. <laughs> so we're going to do that tonight. So keep sharing, keep liking, keep subscribing because every time we hit that, that next hundred subscribers, we will do another giveaway. Okay. And all you have to do is just comment. We're literally just going to scroll through the comments and pick somebody. Okay. All right. With that, we are also getting a ton of really good questions coming in through YouTube. So that's awesome. Some people are coming over here and actually sending the questions to me through DM. Some of them are commenting on the videos, all of that. So um, I have been trying to keep up with most of the comments on the YouTube channel, but I, I'll tell you what, it's been going really well and it's been a little overwhelming. <laughs> so I will, I will get to everybody at one point or another, um, but some of them are like good for us to actually do a whole live stream for. So. Um, I love that zip up. Are you selling it? I am not selling it, but this is a potential prototype for uh, what we're doing for Kitty's Conquer the Stage, as you can see, as you can see. So it's a prototype right here. It's a sample. <laughs> um, but um, with that, so uh, one of the questions that came in to me actually through my DMs, I got this question was uh, in regard to criteria and how it changes when you go from being an amateur to a pro um, and also when you go from open to masters. So the, the main question that was asked was like, it looks like they reward different things in the NPC than they do in the IFUB. It looks like they reward different things than they do in the open classes versus the master classes. So we're gonna go into that a little bit. We're gonna dive into it a little bit. Um, I'll be at CCS, there you go. <laughs> well, we'll see, maybe, you'll, maybe this is what we'll have at CCTS, you'll see. We'll have to wait and see. This is a potential, it's a potential, right? Um, so the bottom line is this. Criteria doesn't change. That's the bottom line. It doesn't change from the amateur leagues to the pro leagues. It doesn't change from open to masters. It is always the same for every class division. Okay, so obviously the, the criteria is going to be different if you're in bikini versus if you're in figure or if you're in wellness versus if you're in women's physique. The, the actual division criteria is very like laid out, very structured. There is a criteria that is set for each division. It does not change when you go from NPC to IFBB or when you go to open or masters, okay? It's the same. What happens though is that the bodies that show up are different, right? The bodies that show up on stage at those levels are different, okay? So let's go from NPC to IFBB first and then we'll talk about from open to masters, okay? When you're in the NPC, you are an amateur. I always relate this to football, right? When you're going into your first show, you are peewee football. You're peewee. You're not even high school, you're nothing. You're peewee, okay? So always remember that if you're a first time competitor, you are a peewee football player. If you're going to the pro league, you're in the NFL, okay? So that's the first pitfall that a lot of girls make is that they start comparing themselves as a first time competitor to IFBB and it's not even the same league. You wouldn't take a peewee football player and compare them to an NFL football player, right? You wouldn't expect them to run the same drills. You wouldn't expect them to have the same times. You wouldn't expect them to have any of the same things that an NFL pl a player would have. Same thing here, okay? Don't expect yourself as a first time competitor to look like Jen Dory. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, 
right? Jen Dory for bikini right now is considered to be the pinnacle of bikini, right? Francielli is considered to be the pinnacle of wellness. Sydney is considered to be the pinnacle of figure. That's what you want to aspire to be. That's your criteria that you want to try to hit. But as a first time competitor, you are not going to look like that, period, okay? So you wanna set realistic goals and things like that as you go along in your competitive career. And you wanna set big, high goals that you wanna reach as well, right? So maybe someday you'll be on that pro league, pro league stage. Maybe someday you'll be on the Olympia stage, you know what I mean? But be here first. Be in peewee fo football first. Learn how to run your routes first, right? So even though the criteria from a first time competitor to a NFL player or IPB player is the same, you're still not going to get the same looks because they are different levels of ability, okay? When I go to a local show, there may be one girl that actually fits the criteria on that local stage for whichever division she's competing in. One, maybe, maybe one. And she's probably gonna win the overall if she does. We've all seen it, we've all seen it where there's been one girl that, you know, she'll win the overall at a local show, then she'll go to nationals and she'll do well at nationals too, maybe even win her pro card. And then she'll go up to the pro league and guess what, she gets her ass handed to her. <laughs> Happens all the time. You know why? Because as you move up in levels, the girls get closer and closer and closer to that criteria, right? They're getting more and more like the criteria. When you walk in at the NPC level, all you gotta do is hand over your $100, $125, whatever the price is for, for, for classes now, I don't even know, it's like $125, something like that per class. All you gotta do is hand over your money. <laughs> all you gotta do is hand over your money and you're in. Right? Once you get up to the pro league, you have to have qualified for that. So automatically, if you are in the pro league, you are going to fit the criteria better. So the criteria doesn't change, it's just that they've worked their way up to the NFL. It's very, you would never see an NFL player play in peewee football, right? You'd never see that. And vice versa, you wouldn't see a Pee Wee football player play in the NFL. It's the same thing here, okay? So there's always gonna be those phenoms that kinda go and skyrocket. You know, we've seen it even in football. Some guys won't even play in high school and they'll go to college and all of a sudden they're a superstar. It happens, not very often, but it does happen. Same thing here. Some people will, will just skyrocket to the pro league. Doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be an MVP once they get to the pro league though, right? So, be where your feet are, understand that the criteria is the criteria. So this is another way to, to, to kind of dial yourself back a little bit too when you're trying to you know, manage your expectations. Just because you qualify for national level doesn't mean that you're ready to go. Do you fit the criteria of what you're seeing on the national level? If you do, go for it. Go for it. But be sure that you're ready for that. Be sure that you've got a coach that's telling you, yeah, you're ready for that. You're ready to go to national level. If you look like the girls that are competing on the national level and you're at the local level, by all means, head on up to the national level once you've qualified. Get your judging feedback, they'll tell you. They'll tell you if you're ready for that. But just because you win a local show doesn't necessarily mean that you are ready to go to the national level. Same thing when you win your pro card. A lot of times girls win their pro card, they need to take some time off so they can fit the criteria a little bit better once they get to the pro league. And that could be any number of things. It could be putting more size on, it could be taking some size off. It could be conditioning, it could be presentation, it could be whatever. It could be a thousand things. But what happens is as you get up to the pro league, everybody just fits the criteria a little bit better, and a little bit better, and a little bit better. Right, so if you imagine being in the NPC as a brand new competitor, you're way out here. This is your criteria box. You gotta fit right inside here as a criteria box. Right, so you're in the NPC, you're at a local level show, and then you're going up to a national level show, and then you're going up to a pro level show, and then you're going up to the Olympia, and then you're going up to the, the Olympia top five. You see how that works? You're just getting closer and closer and closer to that criteria box, okay? So the criteria does not change 
from NPC to IFBB, the competitors just get better. They get closer to that box. Does that make sense? Make sure if you have any questions on this, feel free to type in your questions on this. Um, I'll give you a second and then I'm gonna move on to the open versus masters thing too. When it comes to the criteria from open, any class in open going up to masters, again, the criteria does not change. Criteria does not change. Master starts when you hit 35 years old. There are a lot of women in every division on the Olympia stage that are over the age of 35 because the criteria is the same, right? I'm trying to think of who the highest placement in the Olympian bikini, and I think, I think Camille Perriot may have been the highest placing Olympian that was in her 40s because Erin Stern is 41 and she placed 15th, but I know Camille Perriot got up into the top 10 and she was 42, I believe, at the time. So there have been some, see, Devin is, is a master's competitor. Devin, are you 35 or are you 36? So Devin is also a master's competitor that's been on the Olympia stage and placed in the Olympia and wellness. So that's what I'm saying. I'm like, it's not different. And actually in some of these divisions that have more muscle, more muscle can actually be better for master's age women, right? With each advancement, you're a little fish in a big pond all over again. Yes, that's correct. Almost 36, okay. And that tends to be about when girls, I think, girls peak in their late 30s, to be honest with you. I think girls peak in their late 30s. Um, isn't Jan Lee, no, Jan is not in her 40s. Uh-uh, no, Jan is like 32. Yeah, no. Um, Angelica is 36 or 37. 36 or 37. I believe Angelica won her first title when she was 34, I think. I could be wrong on that. I'm, I may be off by a year or two in there, but she was in her mid thirties when she won her her first title. I believe Ashley Kaltwasser is 32 as well, I think, pretty sure, somewhere in that range. Um, Janet and Ashley are both somewhere in their, their early thirties. They both are. Um, do men peak later in age? No, I believe that they peak at the same time, at the same time. So that's why I say with, with figure two, with Sydney, Sydney is only like, I, I think she's just turned 30, maybe, maybe turned 30. She may still be in her 20s. Sydney, Gillian, I don't know. Jen Ronziti is 39. Yes, she is. Jen Ronziti is 39. Um, we had several girls actually in the Olympia that were in their 40s this year. So again, those are all considered to be masters. Yep, Brina, Brina's 36 at this point. She started competing in Masters last year at 35. Um, yes, it is 30. That's what I thought. I thought she was 30. Um, so again, I mean, <laughs> Sydney could be around for another 10 years <laughs> doing this at the very peak. I mean, she really could. So I, I don't, we'll, we'll see if anybody can come up and take it over from her. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, and then Francie Ali, I don't know how old she is, but she, I think she's got like three kids that are in their teens at least. So she's got to be in her 30s somewhere in there too. Most of these women are in their 30s, mid 30s, even older 30s, right? So when we're talking about masters athletes, it's the same criteria. 35, that's Francielli. I figured she's about 30-ish, 35-ish, mid 30s-ish, somewhere in there. She has to be with the number of kids she's got. So, um, but yeah, so this is this is this is this is the hard thing when you get older, right? Because when you get into these master's classes and things like that, you're always gonna have like a couple of girls that really stand out. And they're gonna be the ones that you would consider to be like your Franciellis, your Devins, your your Angelicas, you know, the girls that, that, that still look like they're in their early 30s when they're actually pushing 40, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? And then you're gonna have women that look normal for their age. <laughs> you know, like that's normal. That's what I'm normal for my age. You know what I mean? Like that's what happens as you get older. Typically what happens with women, we lose a lot of that fullness and roundness in our muscle. Um, so you start looking a little bit grainier, you start looking a little bit harder. So that tends to get rewarded quite a bit when you're in the uh, master's ages. And that's just because that's what the majority of the women look like, right? The majority of the women, once you start getting into your 40s and getting into your 50s, you start looking a little bit harder. 
you start looking a little bit a little bit more grainy that kind of thing so you'll hear that a lot as a critique like she needs to fill out she's too hard she's too grainy so sometimes those women will end up going to the higher muscle divisions like figure and women's physique where they can get away with that a little bit better you know it's harder when you're in divisions like bikini where you do need to stay round and full and bubbly it's harder to do when you get older it's very very rare that you can do that just because our bodies change and if you've been lifting and you've been doing this for 20 30 years something like that you are going to have more muscle density than somebody that's 25. Jen Dory just turned 25 right she turned 25 the Olympia weekend <laughs> so you're gonna look different if you're 45. that's 20 years of in the gym that you got over her so no the criteria is not different the bodies just look different right so at that point you have to decide what you want to do you know and a lot of that's going to come based on what your feedback is sometimes you can just compete in the master's divisions and do really well in the master's divisions and that's great you know sometimes maybe you want to put a little bit more size on you want to try a bigger division it's really hard once you're older though to, to peel that stuff off because what happens when we get older we lose elasticity in our skin stuff starts to sag glutes don't sit quite as high as they used to <laughs> things like that right so usually the 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 cure to things like that is to add more add more size add more muscle so that would indicate maybe you got to move up to another division right but in general no the criteria does not change so if you've got somebody that's 45 that looks like she's 35, like an Angelica or something, she's gonna win. That's why a lot of times when you guys go into shows as master's competitors, I work with a lot of master's ladies. You ask me which, which divisions you should enter. I say enter your age and 10 years below you, right? So if you're 45, you can still enter open because 10 years below you is 35, which is also open, right? Some ladies look phenomenal even when that once they get older and say, listen, go ahead, go ahead and go to open two. Go ahead. You know? Can someone record this for me so I can watch when I get off work? <laughs> this will be reposted. This will be reposted. Whenever I do live feeds, they get reposted here on Instagram. And now I'm also taking them and putting them onto YouTube too. Right? So don't worry. <laughs> Sister <laughs> Sister Satan will be available. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I feel like you know each other. <laughs> That's too funny. Um, so yeah, so it'll, it'll go, it'll go up on the, on the profile for you. No worries. No worries. Um, that's why we started doing the YouTube channel too, because uh, it's just more user friendly when you actually watch these videos back and things like that. And uh, so that's why I have you guys moving over there. So um, if you guys didn't know, I don't know how many of you guys have YouTube premium, but I have YouTube premium. So I actually listen to, to a lot of YouTube podcasts and things like that when I'm doing my, my training and things like that. I rarely listen to music. I usually listen to YouTube when I'm doing my training. So you can play it in the background, all that kind of stuff. That's one of the advantages of YouTube. You can't do that here on Instagram. So anyway, um, so yeah, so in general, like I said, it's not any different. It's just based on what you look like um, and how close you are to the criteria, right? I love you, sister. Yeah, I figure that. <laughs> I remember you said we have <laughs> the same walk. You do. I figured that was your sister. I figured. <laughs> I was like, you know her too well. <laughs> yes, you do. You definitely, that's the way I can pick it. First of all, I knew she was your sister the minute I saw her in Pittsburgh. I almost thought it was you. First of all, you look very, very similar. And you have the exact same walk on stage. You absolutely do. <laughs> um, so... I know it can be frustrating sometimes, especially once we're getting older. Again, I'm, I'm masters too. I'm 40. You know what I mean? Once we start getting older, our bodies start to change a little bit. So that's why sometimes just competing in the, in the masters classes, once you do get up into the 40s and 50s and so on. I mean, Karen just won the 16 over and her, her first 16 over pro show. You know, once you get up into those ages, sometimes it's a better idea to just compete against women who look similar to you. Not the, that the criteria has changed. The criteria did not change, but the bodies showing up are changing. 
just like we talked about, the NPC bodies look different than the IFEB bodies. The amateurs look different than the pros. The masters look different than the open, right? Erin has done a great job transitioning to bikini. She did. She did a great job. And Erin's a perfect example, too, that when she first came out on the, on the scene for bikini, she was actually a little bit too muscular. She was a little bit too, um, too big overall. She looked like a figure competitor trying to be a bikini competitor. That's what she looked like. And she was able to reduce her size, which is very hard to do once you get up into these ages. And once you get up to 40, she's 41, almost 42. You know, when you get up into that age range, it's hard to peel muscle off and still look good, <laughs> you know? But she's been doing this her whole life. You know, she was actually an Olympia, like she, she tried for the Olympia, um, uh, not Olympia, Olympics, Olympics. Um, she did the quali qualifiers for the Olympics like twice, that kind of thing, track athlete. So she's been an athlete her whole life. So that helped her for sure. And she was able to reshape her frame. You know, she did well even at the Olympia. You know, she won a pro show at age 41. That's, no, that's nothing, to, nothing to sneeze at, you know, after coming from a different division. That's, that's amazing. So it's possible, you know, just like I said with the NFL, sometimes there's guys that don't actually go to college and play, and then somehow they end up, or they, they don't play in high school, they end up playing in college somehow. You know, that happens. It does, but it's very rare. Very rare. Right? I'm 59. I do my first show in two weeks. Scared shitless. I love watching the 50 and 60 ladies. Yeah, absolutely. And see, here's the thing. In a scenario like you, when you're 59, be watching women that are your age range. Those are the ones that you compare with. You know, it's not that the criteria has changed. It hasn't. But again, as we get older, especially as women, our bodies change. That's what happens. Our bodies change. There's just no, no way around that. So even though the criteria hasn't changed, the bodies showing up do. Right? So that's why it's important to keep some realistic, uh, realistic goggles on, that kind of thing. You know? And there's nothing wrong with that either. It's something you should be proud of. You know, I think, again, going back to Karen winning her first show at 60. Like, shit, I hope I look that good when I'm 60. You know what I mean? Like... That's amazing, right? That's something to be incredibly proud about. Congratulations to the Buff Bombshell. Yes, excited for you. Yeah, there, exactly, exactly. And that's the whole thing, guys. There is no age limit on this at all, right? I see some of these shows. There's women in their 70s competing. I think it's freaking phenomenal. I think it's amazing. You shouldn't want to be 20 anymore anyway. I don't want to be 20 anymore. I'm good where I'm at. <laughs> I got my shit together now. <laughs> I didn't have my shit together when I was 20. I know a whole lot more about myself now. <laughs> good for you. Yes. <laughs> Low hormones. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You know, we all have something. And as we get older, it gets harder. It gets harder as you get older. So you should be even more grateful and thankful that you can do this and look amazing doing it. Because it gets harder. It gets harder. Our bodies don't want to do it anymore. Right? I was just talking about that this weekend. Like, I went out with my husband for Halloween and, you know, had a great time. Went to this great club, little lounge thing. We literally had our own little section, you know, smoked hookah and had a few drinks all night long. And I felt like, I feel like I need, like, three weeks to recover from that. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I'm definitely 40. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're never too old to chase dreams. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> you only live once. That's right. Absolutely. Let me see. I think I've got a uh, question that came in here. Let me see. Thanks still. And uh, oh, gotcha. No worries, Karen. No worries. I'm glad you're here to at least, uh, at least say hi, Karen. It's okay. She's an IG jail. <laughs> a Karen's here. She's just an IG jail. <laughs> I don't know how she got in jail. I'd bail her out if I could. I don't know how she got in there. <laughs> Any questions, you guys? Do you guys have any questions about this topic? It was a great topic, though, because I can understand where people would think that the criteria changes because you do see different bodies getting rewarded. But it's really just because the bodies change. Bodies change from NPC to IVB. The bodies change from Open to Masters. So you're going to see something different because they got to pick somebody to win that day. Right? They have to pick somebody to win. Okay? I'm going to leave it for questions for a minute, and then we're going to do our, our drawing for our first posing giveaway. Okay? 
And yes, I'm still drinking an energy drink at 8.40 at night because I still have client updates to do this evening. So, yes, that is the life of a business owner, you guys. We don't sleep. It's not true. I do sleep. I just work all the time. <laughs> Any questions, guys? Okay, so what I'm going to do, let me see if I can figure this out first of all. Um, I have all of the comments up here on my YouTube channel. Oh, we got a, count, a question. Over the years, the divisions have changed slightly as well. Example, used to have one-piece suits. Yeah, one-piece suits were in play right before I started. Love the message to embrace aging as a competitor. Absolutely. It's something to be super proud of if you can still do this when you're in your 50s and 60s, man. Like... I, I am just blown away by some of the women that I that I do work with. Miriam Jenkins, perfect example, 56 years old, looks freaking phenomenal. Is placing against placing in these master shows, placing against 35-year-olds. Um, you know, like it's just ridiculous. I'm like, I want to be like them when I grow up. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. Let's see, guys. You get your. Oh, let me see. What does it say? Sorry, there's a couple questions coming in. Do you offer consults for athletes with other coaches? So I don't, um, so the consultations are just to work with me, right? So I've had this question a few times too, asking if I do um, assessments, like a physique assessments of people. And I don't do that unless you're a client. I feel like I'm stepping on other people's toes. So I do assessments when the, we have these pro shows. That's like analyzing the actual game day footage, but I don't actually assess athletes unless you're working with me right if you're working with me then absolutely we'll talk about all that stuff absolutely but if you're not i'm not, not going to stop on anybody's any coach's toes or anything like that right um let's see uh, yes miriam there she is yes <laughs> having fun too yes absolutely miriam is the oh that's how i express love <laughs> i love it i love it okay so let me see how i can do this i think i can just flip this around and there we go. Okay, guys. So, see, so we've got all of our comments over here. And these are all of our comments that have been published on our channel. You can see it's published right here. So, I'm going to pull my, my mouse up right here on the screen. So, this is going to highlight whichever one, whichever one I actually stop on. And literally, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll through it like a handful of times and just see where it lands. It's going to take a couple of minutes for it to actually stop. And whatever it lands on, that's who we're going to give the, the posing session away to. This is a free hour session. So, let's see what happens. Ready? Let's see. Okay, so I just did a bunch of scrolls, and you can see they're moving, so we'll see where it actually lands. Give it a second. It's moving. Okay, I think it stopped, but I don't know where my, my thing is. So here we go. So Tara, Tara Martin right there. That's where we stopped. So Tara, if you're out there, I'll, kinda, I'll comment on this too when we finish up. Tara, you've just won a free hour session with me for posing. So congratulations, and again, I will um, I'll comment on this actual comment so that if she's not on our live feed here, she'll know that she won, her, won herself a free hour posing session with me. All right, let me flip this around. There we go. Yes, congratulations to Tara. Yes, so that's what we're gonna do to find winners for all of our drawings, guys. So I'm just gonna literally scroll through the comments and wherever it stops, it stops. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Um, we are, let me see, I was gonna see. <laughs> I'll make sure she knows that she won the hour session. So, and if by chance, like you get chosen or something and you don't actually want the hour session, you can pass it off to a friend or something that could use it too. Totally fine. All right, any questions, you guys? But congratulations to Tara. I'll make sure she knows that she won herself a free, a free hour posing session. When it comes to these hour posing sessions, you can split them up into two half hours if you like as well. Um, so that's our first winner. Once we hit 700 subscribers, we will do another, another giveaway. We'll do the exact same thing and just pick somebody from the list. And that's, that's how we get those, those, uh, those comments or those posing sessions out. Cool? Any questions? Any other questions I didn't answer that I missed tonight? Hope that helps clear up some criteria confusion. The criteria is the same. That's the bottom line. The criteria is the same. We're always trying to get to that, that golden box. You know what I mean? But sometimes we're outside of it. We gotta move in. Little by little, move in. Right? Okay, so this week we do have, um, I think it's the Prague Pro this week. 
I feel like there's another show this week too. There's Sacramento or something like that. But there's a few pro shows this week. So we will definitely do previews of all the pro shows this week. Um, love listening to your lives. Very educational and great information. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you for coming. <laughs> so we will definitely do previews this week. I have um, a few more videos to put up on YouTube this week. Um, so go comment, like, subscribe. Our link for that is in our bio here on this profile. So you can get over there and subscribe. And again, once we hit 700 subscribers, we will do another giveaway. So the more, the, the more action we get, the more giveaways we'll do. Okay. Thank you, great explanation. You're welcome, you're welcome. I'm, I'm glad that I can help. Um, my whole goal here is to make this sport less confusing because it really is pretty pretty cut and dry once you know it, but it's really hard when you're first getting into it to understand it because it's such a subjective look, you know what I mean? But once you understand the criteria and you understand what's being rewarded, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense once you understand it. So. Again, my goal is to just try to make this as easy for you as competitors as possible so that you understand what's being rewarded and you understand how to do better, right? And on that note, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you wanna work with me, suitsandposing.com is where you have to go. We do hair, makeup, suits, and posing. For those of you going to Clash All South this weekend, if I'm doing, sorry, lost the connection. I knew that was gonna happen. It's been a crappy connection the last couple of the days. So anyway, um, I will get makeup and hair schedules out by tomorrow for those of you doing uh, Clash All South this coming weekend. So I will see some of you guys in Orlando again. <laughs> go to Orlando like every month. I'll see some of you guys in Orlando uh, this week. And we got it. We got a full slate of shows this week or this month. Uh, Sundays with Sean group posing on the 14th this month. Uh, it is open to schedule. If you haven't done so already, you can go in there and schedule. That's the only one we have this month because that's the only available Sunday I actually have. So go sign up. Uh, that's it. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Enjoyed your Halloween. I hope you were happy, healthy, and safe. And we'll have fun this coming week with more show previews and more questions answered. All right? Have a great night, you guys.